Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Waitley Select Board of uh, December 30th, 2020. First item on the agenda is uh, meeting minutes, approval of the minutes of the December 9th, 2020 meeting. For a uh, motion. Second. Okay, roll call vote, Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants. Uh, I did sign them even though I, I, they didn't uh, signature and appear on the file copy. Any comments? None for me. No. Oh, okay, none for me. Public comment. Uh, anybody have anything they wanna say that's, that's not related to items on the agenda. No. Nope. Okay, moving on. Uh, we're scheduled appointments. The first one is from uh, Waitley Ari Holdings, uh, Bob, Chris, and uh, Neil. Yes, they're all on. Uh, discuss considering entering into a host community agreement for a proposed marijuana cultivation establishment located at 23 LaSalle Drive. Fred, okay. if you want, I could, Joyce and or I could give an introduction as to, as to this item if you want. Okay, could you do that? Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so at, at the, at the was it two? It was either one or two select board meetings ago. Um, yeah. uh, these folks came and they presented a sort of a preliminary idea of what they were proposing to do there. Um, and this is that uh, 23 was South Drive. Um, and the board authorized or, or directed Joyce and I to, to enter into negotiations with them. And we had a phone call on Monday and we talked about um, a few. <coughs> different parts of the host community agreement and what they're proposing to do on the property. Um, I had shared with them previously the, the most recent host community agreement that the board had entered into with um, DMCTC. That's the, the, the proposed establishment on River Road. Um, and we talked about uh, several things. It, it's essentially the same agreement as um, as we had previously entered into with DMCTC. Community impact fee is the same um, at 3% and the charitable contribution and educational contributions are also the same as um, with prior applicants. Um, in terms of the facility itself, it's a, um, the agreement lists 100 square feet of canopy. Um, I think that's what they hope to work up towards. Um, I think uh, initially they're gonna start a little bit smaller, but um, they're hoping to work their way up to that. So it's really much, um, pretty much an agreement that the, that the board has had with others. I don't know if Joyce, you wanna add anything to that? No, that was a pretty good summary. It, there was really not a lot to say. We've got uh, a template that we like and yeah, they followed that. And, and, and what was the feedback that you received when you pre pre presented it? Um, it had to do with, it really had to do with um, how to present the size of the facility. Um, it didn't center around anything financial really. Yeah. That was really about it. And we talked about the You'll notice that the entity's name, the entity that, that we're entering into the agreement with has changed. Um, the CCC requires that the host community agreement be with the operator of the facility, not the company that holds real estate if they're separate. Um, so we had a discussion about that. Our understanding is that the, the, the ownership of the corporation remains the same. Um, but... They were they were receptive to the agreement as previously uh, provided. Okay, the th thing that I 
just curious about it probably come up at the planning or ZBA meeting is on the, the impacts, negative impacts is there going to be impact on the town water system? I think you're hooked up with the town water. Is that that's true? You're going to use more town water? No. Or you have your own water system. We do. We have our own wells, but the, the town water supplies water to the uh, like the residential spaces, the kitchens and stuff like that, which um, obviously those would remain similar. You know, those usages would remain similar to the, as they are now. They probably might go down a little bit, but about, about the same. And then the, uh, the, the actual watering of the plants will be through the well, uh, well that we own. Okay. So there and, are uh, wells, there are existing, the, existing wells on the property right now? Yeah, there's four wells on the property. There's two shallow wells and two deep wells. And the total usage out of those wells would probably go down um, at uh, from the, the flower farm uh, uh, usage just because um, we're going to have a recirculating system that just has a little bit better water efficiency. And we're going to probably have a reduction in outdoor crops. So overall, I think we'll, we'll reduce the, the well water usages and we won't be, um, and, uh, we'll, and we'll probably reduce the, um, the, uh, uh, the farm also currently draws water from the river to irrigate uh, the fields. Um, there might be reduction in that as well. There would um, you know, most probably be a reduction in that as well, although we do want to grow some traditional crops in the, in the, uh, in the front field still. So, or, or possibly allow um, others to do it, like uh, um, the guy that does the corn. I, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. His name is Jimmy, I think. <laughs> but there's a couple of people that, that also grow on this land, and um, we might want to be able to uh, allow them to continue to do that if that's an option. But so overall, the water usages would go down. <laughs> okay. Maybe if I'll I can stay. make a correction, excuse me. If I can make a correction, there's. There's one shallow well at 23 LaSalle Drive. There's one shallow well at 21 LaSalle Drive. There's no uh, deep deep wells on the property. Oh, sorry. Thanks, John. Yep. And John, you guys tap into the Mill River, is that right? Well, uh, we've irrigated out of the Mill River since, uh, since my grandfather started the property yeah. Yeah. Uh, for our outdoor crops. So it's seasonal use yeah. and uh, it's minimal, yep. Okay. And I, I, have, uh, I mean, in, in, in Joyce, we trust on these things, so. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess just as a reminder to everybody, I mean, this, when the select board does the HCA, we're primarily concerned with um, the financial aspects and we always want to hear a good plan. Um, but uh, a lot of the abutters concerns, and I think there are some with some of the abutters, um, we need to make sure those get addressed by the planning board and the ZBA. I know there's, I don't always know which committee does which things, um, but uh, we, we should do as I think these folks are amenable to doing whatever we can to help mitigate um, the concerns of the, uh, of our abutters. Yeah. Correct. Yep, we have um, a, a couple items that we know we need to go back and we have we have prepared some documentation and research and, and we'll be sharing that with the, with the appropriate boards um, at that time. Okay. So do you have meetings already scheduled with planning and CBA? So we, we want to get some clarification and I'm not sure it's from this group. We had uh, applied in a different town and the process was a little different, but we're happy to do it however we, we the best process is, but we're, we're uncertain of what's next, I guess. And, and we, our understanding is on the seventh, there's a planning board meeting um, that we would need to be at, but we didn't know if we need to do something before that. So if anybody here has any insight, otherwise we can reach out to those folks and ask specifically. So Brian. Yeah, you be, yeah. Yeah. As we talked about before, you can contact, contact the chairperson, Roger and Don, all, the, all those boards. Um, okay. The zoning bylaw doesn't, doesn't, set of preferences to whether you okay. get site plan approval or special permit first. Got it. Okay. So we'll reach out to them. 
but our goal is to get that get those on the schedule as soon as possible we're ready to go and um in january if we can and, and move it forward so we'll probably try to do that okay Hey, I'm, I'm good, Fred. I don't know what the process is, but I I, I think we're we're good uh, from my perspective. So, okay, Joyce, you have any more any other concerns? Um, no, I think I would just uh, move that we um, uh, go forward with this agreement, I would, which I mean a signature it. from all of us. I think. Yeah. Okay, and I, I have no problems with with some, with the agreement either. So. So oh, then would you second my motion? I already did, Joyce. Okay. <laughs> okay, do we need a roll call vote? Yeah. Okay, Joyce? Yes. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred? Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else you need from us, or are we free to go? Um, uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff on this agenda you might not want to miss. <laughs> I'm just like, glad my two year old's being quiet for the last five minutes. Come on. <laughs> but I understand if you've got a uh, you know, toddler to take care of. Yeah. But real quick, um, we sent over the certification that's required as well from the CCC. So that'll just be something you guys, I think, have to execute. We, we execute on our behalf. So whenever you get a chance. Yeah. We'll get that signed and we'll. We'll um, send it back to you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. 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 Thank Talk about installation of no idling signs at town building parking lots and discuss the issue of scrap metal recycling. Oh, hi, Fran. Hi, right. right, Sarah okay. and, and Fran are here from Board of Health. Okay, Fran? Yes, uh, by way of background, uh, we, uh, upon some complaint, um, uh, took it upon ourselves to buy some no idling signs, idle free zone signs for the transfer station, which we'll put up soon um, because of our staff being stuck there basically and having to breathe that um, in. It's also a state law, by the way. So um, we talked about it at the Board of Health and uh, Becky and I and, and um, Mike um, have concluded this probably work well with a other town parking lots, including in front of the post office and town hall, um, library. Um, so maybe even in front of a few sp spots down there at the town offices. So that was our idea. Becky can f can talk a little bit more about it. Um, They're very nice, um, you know, state regulated state. Um, I don't know, <laughs> state highway design signs so they're metal and they're painted nice and all that. Um, Becky, do you want to add anything? Um, no, I think it's a nice opportunity to be consistent through the town. Mm -hmm. um, and even, I'm wondering if it even makes sense to do it at the schools. I mean, I know that's awkward because people really like to idle outside of schools, but kids, you know, get really impacted by it. So that's, mm. I'll just throw that out there. I know that would be a, actually probably a tricky thing. I, I could imagine complaints, mm. but um, mm. but I think it's a, a nice opportunity to do the right thing. Well, you, you can do a school in the, the parking lot, the, the driveway entrance, people just wait there to pick up their, their kids. So I know, yeah. exactly. Maybe not there, but the parking lot toward, in the back, maybe. It'd be a nice suggestion. Maybe people would start thinking about it. Yeah, I, I know <laughs> that with schools, it's a it's kind of a huge issue, like the buses and uh, yeah. But anyway, well, I thought it would be a nice opportunity for the town. Hmm. I think it's a very valid reminder that people shouldn't be idling. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, I, I get that in the summer they want the air conditioning on, in the winter they want their heat on, but you know what? Climate so, change, <laughs> breathing. Right, I, I, I just think that at, at the very least, a, a friendly, hey, this would be a good idea. 
yeah. combined with the amount of uh, number of, of, of pounds of CO2 that are emitting into the atmosphere um, by the 30 cars that are waiting there for pickup during a given afternoon. Yeah. I don't know. That's a little flippant, I, I admit. But um, I'm actually completely in agreement to put these up wherever we have the power to do it. I guess my question to Brian would be is, do we need the school committee to sign off on signs at the school? It's just asking people to comply with existing law. So I don't think there's a mm -hmm. matter of, and I, I think the schools actually have an anti-idling policy. They do. Oh, um, good. oh so, all um, the more reason, yeah. Yes. So I don't know if, if this board can say, yes, put them up at the school too. And I think it's, it's primarily at that place where everybody idles. So I think that's the, I, I don't think people idle in the back parking lot. I think they park there and walk into the school. All right. So um, any place along there where it's known that um, idling has been taking place in the past, let's put up the signs there. The one thing to remember that the, the law states it's five minutes so that if you go into the there's nothing like the you know i thought jim might have attended the meeting tonight and he's talked to me about it and uh, <clears throat> so the issue is that you know if you go into the post office and you leave your car running that's your choice you just can't do it for longer than five minutes because that's yeah. what the mass general law is yeah the sign the sign says all that it's and it's kind of funny because I mean, five minutes is a long time. <laughs> which, which is why I, you know, in a roundabout way, I honestly don't think that maybe the transfer station back when they were more likely to use it for a social gathering, sometimes people would stop and talk for quite some time. But for the most part, I don't see anybody going to the post office and staying there five minutes. It, um, you know, what I hope, in and I, out. I, I know what you're they saying. Do. I, I, um, Mm -hmm. What I hope is that even though the sign says five minutes, and even though five minutes is a long time, maybe it's a suggestion so that for someone who maybe just doesn't think about it, they might say, oh, maybe I don't need to idle. You know, it's, yeah. we're not going to get everyone to not idle unless we're standing out there, and I'm not going to do that. But no. it is, I, th I think it's a nice thing to have out there to remind people that it is an issue. I actually, I, I don't, I, I, I hate to ever try to correct Becky, but this, the thing in our meeting material does not say five minutes. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, the sign it's, doesn't say that? The sign no. just says MGL chapter 90 section, blah, 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 blah. And I, my guess is if you go look that up, it says five minutes. Yeah, it does. That's true. It does. And Why um, idle for five minutes? I mean, yeah. how cold is your car going to get or how hot is it going to get in five minutes? <sighs> And I'd like to counter that argument too, because there's um, there are plenty of times where people don't go into the post office, for example, because there's another person in there and they're just hanging out there. And it could well be more than five minutes um, in certain yeah. cases. I don't think it's general rule, but it doesn't matter. The idea is to get people thinking about yeah. turning their cars yeah. off while they're just sitting in there and idling. And, and so I think all over town. Mm -hmm. and, and Fran, I think that that's why I'm going to go back to the, to the and, and I've never been able to say this word well, the educable moment. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, if, if yeah. the sign, you know, you need to remind people that it is mass general law, but also the number of pounds of CO2 that are emitted by an average car over a five minute period of time is X. Mm -hmm. People care. At least I think they care. At least I hope they care. And, and, mm -hmm. And I think that way people will take it as a, oh yeah, thanks for the reminder rather than being Sherman-esque about the statement about not idling. I, 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 just, I, I just think it's a moment to teach as opposed to mandate. Maybe I could even write something for the scoop about it, including like, you know, what the law says, why we're doing it, um, you know, that we, you know, there are always circumstances ah. where, that are um, extenuating, but um, yeah. You know, just, I think it's a nice conversation to have. Yeah, yeah, emphasize the health aspect for the people. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. there and breathe in whatever mm -hmm. cars are emitting there. Does, does, the law, does the law provide any, anything for fines? Probably non-criminal if you wanted to go that route. <laughs> yeah. but, no, no, but <laughs> if, if people don't obey the sign and they're there for extended period of time, I think it, can they be fined? Probably have authority to fine them 
or do we have to adopt that law or, or is it common knowledge that that's a law that applies anyway? Let's ask the ticket writer. I'm just looking it up right now and it it's says- in credit, It's a $50 fine. Oh, okay. $50. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that is in there. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's a, state, it's a state law. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the other other location, how about Hurley Field? Yeah, how about it? I mean, it, should, it should be there, certainly. I don't think there's a lot of idling down there, personally. I don't think people stop there for five minutes. They, they stop and they, you know, and they're not staying in their car. Um, the only people I can remember who ever stayed in their car for an extended period of time were people who were, um, who, who had a hard time moving around. And so they, they watched their, their, I think their grandchildren's game from the car. Um, whether they idled or not, I, I don't know, but I don't think anyone's doing it. But, but that being said, it should be included. Right, right. And there's, there's two other locations that, that I, I see people idling their cars. And, and I guess maybe it should go back to our, our police chief to, to monitor them locations. One is, what is it, at the center school, I see cars that, out of state cars in a parking lot. And I don't know if they're idle or not, but th th there are cars there. And I see also cars at the DeMaio, uh, locate, DeMaio lot on State Road uh, very frequently. Now, I, I, I don't know whether they idle or not, but I, I mean, maybe our, our police uh, chief should uh, pay attention or, or look at, consider that in their routine uh, monitoring activities to get people to, uh, uh, if they're not there for an emergency or for a reason to be there, they shouldn't be parking on town property. Well, I, Fred, I think that the, I'll speak for the DeMeo lot. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I drive by there a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think the majority of people that I see parking there this time of year, it's more frequent because people are parking there to hunt. You yeah, know, they're going. They're parking there to go into the woods to hunt. I don't think they're idling. I think they're going yeah. to hunt in the And I think um, didn't we give uh, the the snowmobile club permission to let people park right. there? Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So I think that's. I don't think I have no problem with putting a sign up there uh, for no idling. Right. Uh, and that also at the center school. So if the issue tonight is signs, mm -hmm. I got no problem putting signs up there. And regardless of whether idling is a problem now or not, but we should probably hit the places that where we know it's a problem and mm -hmm. specifically the school and the transfer station first, because those are places where there's, we know there's people there who are because of their job having to breathe in the excess pollution and, mm -hmm. um, and, and those should take a priority, but I have no problem with putting them on all town properties including Sandy Lane, um, any place we have a parking lot, library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would, I would make a motion, if, if it requires a motion, and I think it probably does, that, that we, would, um, we would permit the Board of Health to place no idling signs on all town property in the order that they deem most appropriate. Um, I, I, would, I would add, though, that, that my motion would include uh, points of education so that people are not seeing it as a as a as, as a as a mean thing but as a, as a teaching opportunity so that people understand the impact of health and climate uh, from idling. Great. I'll second that very long motion. Okay, any other any further discussion? I'll work on a piece, Joyce and okay. Fran. <laughs> okay, roll call vote, Joyce. Aye. Jonathan. Fred, yes. Okay, the other item, uh, Fran, you had was on the uh, scrap metal recycling. Yeah, I just want to go back before we go on to that. Um, so we'll work with Keith on getting them put up then. We just figure out how many signs and um, where they would be at most appropriate. And, and you uh, can't work with them. Pardon? You guys yeah. are going to language for those signs. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you you get you put it to the Board of Health, so I want to make sure that we're with Keith on this on uh, mm -hmm. location and installation. Okay, You're right, we're there, Keith. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the issue of scrap metal. 
has been a longstanding one. The town has never had an official scrap metal recycling program, as far as I know, at least before my time, maybe. But if we can no longer do that. Um, we'll be cited by Jan Amin doing our transfer station inspections. And uh, no matter where it is, behind the um, highway garage or, or somewhere else. So it's not really a, um, a project that's going to be worth the town's investment in, given the low rate of return and the amount of work, as Keith has said. And I don't know if you saw the email exchange, but um, you know it's a problem. And it's you know our town highway garage and transfer stations are not closed off. They're not lockable. People go back there all the time. Uh, as we discussed it, Keith was going to look into, um, and I think maybe with Jim. We should figure we can do this together. Work on a um, surveillance system, cameras back there, so we can keep an eye on the whole site. Given that we are probably going to discontinue metal re scrap metal recycling at this point, uh, and you have you've already voted it, so uh, I don't know what the, what the outcome is going to be of that. I I, um, I guess Keith maybe can chime in and say what uh, you found out. But if we can jointly work on that surveillance system down there, which I think is a bit over, long overdue actually, given that our site is not lockable, it would be good to, uh, you know, keep that monitored and, you know, Jim and company are right down there anyway, they can take a spin around the building occasionally. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can chime in. I, I, I have, um, I contacted Jim and asked him who he had used for the surveillance system at the police station. And I contacted that same company. <coughs> they came out and gave me an estimate. Um, I felt if, if I was going to install a surveillance system, I might as well not only do the exterior. To me, the, the biggest investment is the, the recording equipment. My feeling was, why not get an estimate for inside the building as well? Um, so he gave me an estimate for everything. Um, it was seems a little steep, but in talking with Jim, you know, there's certainly um, a lot of the work. If we wanted to try to trim it back, we could do we could cut it back a lot and then do some of the installation of cameras ourselves. It's not that big of a deal. Um, a lot of the expense for the operation is the labor to do the installation. So um, another thing in regards to that is I had spoken to Jan at the solid waste because her and I had a conversation about the, the scrap in the backyard. And I told her that we were considering a surveillance system. And she she chimed in and, and said that she would recommend that the Board of Health apply for the grant <laughs> through the DEP, she says many years, it's um, it's not, the town has not maximized what they could potentially get through there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, she seemed like that was a good avenue for us to, to put a surveillance system in. Um, when I had spoken to that gentleman, we were going to have a camera, not only mounted on the highway department that would monitor all of the transfer station area so certainly like if someone's coming in after hours and is dumping something illegally in the, um, the tin can container, we could have that on camera. Um, if, mm -hmm. And so we can utilize the cameras to, to not just keep track of anybody dumping illegal metal in the background, but also anything else that's going on at the transfer station and around the highway department. So, um, Yes, Joyce. Um, Joyce. I you said uh, about a camera outside the building and inside the building. So when you say inside the building, what building are you talking about? This highway department or the yeah. little bitty shack? Highway department, because the the for them to put the cameras on the highway department in the back to catch the vehicles coming from each direction, so they can get like license plates and things of that nature. Uh -huh. Everything needs to be basically wired in through the highway department. So like in the back of the building, there'd be one in each corner mm -hmm. of the building facing one to the east and one to the west. So you can get, 
people from each direction, faces and things of that nature. So um, the, the simplest thing is, is to have it centralized in the highway department. Okay, but you, I thought you said putting a camera inside the highway department. Well, if once yeah. we have the system in, up in, in there, the biggest, biggest expense is the recording equipment. Oh. To buy another camera for 100 or $120, I think Jim said they run, and have a camera in the highway department, should somebody break into the highway department, we'd have that on camera versus why put the system in and not maximize its recording capabilities. Oh, okay. No, I was well, just wondering because I haven't heard about people breaking into the highway department, but now no, that nobody has, I'm just trying to be proactive and say, oh, okay. if I'm going to have the recording system, why not maximize it? Right. We wouldn't want someone to steal that because that's the valuable thing. <laughs> okay. Do, and then do we, we would also have cameras that can look at the kind of the front part of the um, of the transfer station as well. Yes. Do we do we have a problem today though with the scrap metal of, of what are people bringing it during after hours? Oh yeah. Is they always not during regular hours? Is that is that the oh. concern? Day day and night, Fred. They, they come always in have. there. Right. Yeah. I, and, and I'll admit, I, I never knew that it wasn't allowed until recently. It, it, it was it was like an informal policy. And when we had the opportunity in the past where um, a, a resident from a fellow from Deerfield came on almost a weekly basis and would keep it cleaned, it was it really was a not a problem. Mm -hmm. But now it becomes a, a, an eyesore. And certainly um, when Wickles comes to pull boxes, there's issues. Sometimes he can't get to the box because people have dumped stuff in front of the box. Um, mm -hmm. Right now there's propane tanks out there that we can't dispose of. There's quite a few of those and those are, um, those are gonna cost the town money to get rid of. Right. People dump that stuff illegally because they just think they can. Keith, is there a sign up? No, there's no sign, but my feeling is, and then talking with, like I said, talking with Jan about this, if if we're going to say you can't do it, but people drive in there and know that they're never going to be seen. Oh, I, I, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying that, that in addition to the camera, we should put a sign up just letting people know. Oh, yeah. We need, of course. definitely we need to do that, but I'm just feeling like we need to have some teeth behind this policy so that the police department can could do uh -huh. something about it, <coughs> can yeah. come in and dump stuff off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, Fran, is it, on the bulky waste day that you used to have, was there a special recycling for metal? Yeah, yeah and that will continue when we do it again, who knows when, but maybe late <laughs> or midsummer, depending on how safe it is, there'll be another bulky waste. There'll be more bulky waste days with um, a metal recycling roll off full. So we'll we'll be able to get rid of that stuff. But it's again it's only twice a year. But there's so, a char there's there's a charge for that at bulky waste, isn't there? Not, um, not so much for metal. Yeah, a little bit, but not not much. Um, so everything costs a little bit to ship out, but um, yeah, it's by the weights or by the size of the um, metal can, you know, whatever it is, big items cost a little bit more, but it's not much. Two bucks, the, like the tanks are two bucks. Um, larger propane tanks are uh, maybe five bucks. Uh, so it's, it's not a lot of money. And the other location you mentioned somewhere was it was in, in Greenfield that, that takes it. Is that open all the time or? Or anybody, or yeah, uh, we can take a lot of stuff. Any citizen can take stuff to Greenfield with a five dollar entrance fee, <laughs> pretty much. So for taking scrap metal up there, which they take for free, obviously they're closer to uh, WTE and they can bring it up there with little, little, you know, cost. Relatively speaking, they get a, you know, they get paid something. So they'll take it for free. Um, after the five dollar sort of entrance fee for non-residents. Oh, I didn't know about the, uh, the 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 rate sheet that they say. You know, the one that's posted doesn't say there's an entrance fee. It's well, 
If you read carefully there, you'll see the columns, column headings. There's something like $5 charge for non-residents. So, okay. so can you post somewhere at the transfer station if for people that have scrap metal that they can go to these other locations to tell them where to go, give them a location or address or phone number oh, so yeah. they know what to do with it other than trying to hide it in the regular trash? I don't think many people are doing that. Um, yeah, sure. We will we pull out a, um, you know, besides the scoop, we'll put it up on the website and all, all that stuff. I think there may already be a link to um, that um, price sheet on yes. through the, um, um, the district, the um, Solid Waste Management District. Yeah, I think there was a link in the last scoop as well. Yeah. Yeah, we started already. We you just have to hit them. You know, you have to put it out a few times. You know, repeatedly so people see it. And right. signage, we'll put up signage and right. You know, yeah, keep it up there. So, can I add one more thing? Um, I have never had a piece of scrap metal that I couldn't get rid of <laughs> using FreeCycle. Um, because you, know, you put you you post it on FreeCycle. Somebody who collects metal for the money. We'll come to your house and pick it up for free if you're willing to have people come to your house. And you can put it just out at the end of your driveway and the person will come and pick it up. Um, anytime there's anything with significant metal content, um, I have just never had anything, nobody, they've never posted like bucket of scrap metal. Boom, it's gone. Somebody responds within an hour. So free no. cycle is actually a good option if you just have small amounts every once in a while and you don't want to drive to Greenfield and pay five dollars, it's free. Right. And uh, yeah. there are enough people on FreeCycle who do scrap metal that they'll find a time to come by your house. Mm -hmm. So that, that might be like something you could post to... at the yeah. transfer station. Yeah. Sorry, not not everybody will want someone to come to their house and go to the trouble of you know joining FreeCycle and posting and so on. Yeah. And you have to check your email. So it may not be a solution for everybody, but it may be one of a handful of solutions uh, hmm. you could um, uh, advertise or educate, whichever word we want to use here, for people to uh, to get rid of scrap metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brand, it's been it's been suggested in at least one email that that if we could continue the scrap well. If we could formalize a scrap metal recycling program, that would be good. Is it a, is it an issue of cost, space, or both? Both. Um, both. I think I raised it with you already, but uh, yeah, the amount of metal generated down, scrap metal generated down there is, you know, not worth the rental of a roll off at this point for what we, we the transportation hall cost and uh, the box rental. Plus, where would we put it? <laughs> it's pretty tight site that we have. We'd have to usurp more of Keats turf down there if we wanted to do that. So, uh, you know, at this point, it's not a, I mean, we could do it. It would be a subsidy, basically, for those users, few users. Is, is, there, a, is there a town, an adjacent town that does scrap metal that we could form a partnership with of some kind? Yeah, I believe Deerfield has a roll off. Not sure though. Deer, Deerfield yeah. does take scrap metal. Um, you know, to, to touch a little bit more on what <clears throat> Fran was just talking about, that, you know, one of the biggest issues is if you're going to put in a, a roll off, number one, the metal, that's kind mm -hmm. of heavy stuff. So you've got you your employee, whoever the transfer station attendant is, you can't have mm -hmm. them trying to lift metal up and and chuck it up no. over the side of a box so the you're going to have to build a platform of some sort or a concrete um, retaining wall where the can be walked up and dump the stuff in from the top. Um, and again, it's something that the transfer station isn't really designed and set up where the attendant can keep an eye on that. If it's set off further to the east, and somebody comes in and dumps tire in there, the transfer station attendant is only, if he's there just selling bags to somebody else, they can't be watching everything all at once unless you hire a second employee. And <laughs> it's just not, in my mind, 
worth it. I think Joyce had a great idea of a free cycle, especially if people can just put the stuff out on the side of the road. They don't even have to put it in their car. So I have another idea that we haven't really explored, and that might be we have right now the um, folks down the road taking our um, returnable bottles and cans. What's that organization? I forget. Keith, you know it. Um, ServiceNet? Yeah, ServiceNet. And um, they might be interested. I, it just occurred to me maybe they could do it, but I'm, you know, it's, it has to be legitimate enough that they're um, they do it, doing it regularly and safely, et cetera. We could look into, uh, in, into whether Deerfield would be willing to accept Whitley residents in their scrap metal. <laughs> I can't imagine it's a voluminous amount that it's going to overburden their systems. Well, I, I think Deerfield needs a, don't you need a sticker, a resident sticker in addition? I, I don't know. I'm just asking whether it could be a conversation to be had. That, that's all. Um, sure, we can ask them. I think uh, there are, they do pay a, f a fee for using their transfer, their, yeah, their transfer station. I mean, yeah. and, and, and maybe if it costs you a couple of bucks to, to drop your scrap metal off, then then so be it. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to find a solution. Yeah, it's probably worth yeah. a phone call, but you know, I, I know there's there it's something that seems really easy to us doesn't always. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I'm just nothing. I'll, I'll ask Carolyn. I, I can talk to her and see what she thinks. Okay. So we, the, I guess the board made it took an action at what our last meeting, Brian, that we would end that scrap metal recycling at the transfer station. So, well, there, there wasn't really anything formal to end, let's put it that way. <laughs> it was just a practice that was happening. Okay, well, okay, we got maybe implied that it wouldn't no right. longer be possible to do that, I guess, so. Uh, is that where we stand now, or, or do we want you want uh, Fran to come back in a future meeting and tell us if anything has changed? I can do that. I can let Brian know if there. Or let Brian know, and then yeah, yeah, he'll tell us uh, what has changed. Yeah, Brian, did you know is there a um, a cycle in the year for that grant that Jan was referring to through the DEP? No, because we, yeah, there is a, one of them has a cycle and the other doesn't. We get, uh, you know, we get a deposit towards the end of the year from the recycling um, RDP grant. And I, I don't know if she's talking about that one or another chunk of money that we put directly into the recycling revolving fund for different purchases like bags and things. Uh, I'll find out what what um pot of money she thinks is okay useful for this yeah i think there's there's a good amount of well tens of thousands in the rdp i think right uh might be 1500 but we still owe for bags on that <clears throat> yeah okay, so are, are people dumping scrap metal there today is oh yeah still happening no oh, yeah yeah, we got windows down there. What else we got down there, Keith? Window. Of, yeah, jump. people dump. You know, that's the other issue is people dump bulky, bulky items that aren't metal either. Yeah, that's a part of the problem. It's, it's just a dumping area that shouldn't be. <laughs> so right, I it's not pure scrap metal. It's just convenient dumping. Yeah. If, if we go ahead with the uh, the cameras and. Uh, Security measures. How soon before that could be implemented? Um, I would have to see what I could whittle it down. You know, for for cost wise, um, and also find out how you know the cycle, whether it's something relatively soon that Jan was referring to, or if we got to wait a year on that side of it, or. Mm -hmm. We got to come up with the funding, and it's at the very least we're looking at um, a few thousand dollars just for the recording devices and and mm -hmm. getting some of the basics. But if I remember, the littering fine in Waitley is five hundred dollars, so four tickets for littering there. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, if we keep if we were to catch people, that would quickly add up, and I think it would change the dynamic. Uh, anyway, but we um, we need to do something, and it, it's good. It, you know, we'll find the money, even if it, and then, you know, if we need an, an annual appropriation, small amount, we'll put it in our budget or somebody's budget. Yes. So, so would it be appropriate for to to install the the monitoring devices uh, first before the board takes an action? Or Otherwise, we can't do anything, right? If we say today, stop dumping, I mean, it's still going to continue because you have no way of monitoring it. So, right. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think the no dumping is is probably in a reference to state law. Mm -hmm. um, right. So that was in effect. Um, Fran, you were right. It's 15,255 on the in the RDP. Um, mm -hmm. In that, as I understand it, that's 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 not a project specific grant. But it, the the per, mm -hmm. the the purposes for the expenditures need to be related to recycling. Yeah, essentially. So, broadly speaking, yeah. I, I think <laughs> something we should take action now, and then it, we, we can let the administrative pieces take hold with the with with the uh, installation of monitoring cameras and, and everything. Let's, let's just get it done. Yeah, I think that's true. And, uh, Question is, who views the uh, monitoring tape or whatever it is? Can we, the reason I was thinking uh, we could tie it all into one um, system down there, maybe Jim's system or somebody so that is already paying attention and monitoring the site in some fashion. So I don't know how much time Keith's gonna wanna spend monitoring this, but somebody's got to monitor, right? Yeah, huh? I think I think, I think you would just, if, if, there's, if an object shows up, then you would go back to the, Go back to the digital recorder mm -hmm. and, and play it back, and you'll mm -hmm. be able to do that. Yeah. So, who's going to do that? <laughs> I would hear a recommendation from the Board of Health. Yeah, you guys, oh. if you guys have a recommendation of who should look at this, then. Well, presumably the recorder will be in the highway department. So, I would suggest <laughs> that, that Keith would yeah. probably be the first one to do it. You know, I mean, I, I personally think, in my mind, when we're there five days a week, Mm -hmm. We can easily see if something is showing up in the back that's mm -hmm. uh, you know that's out of the ordinary, and we can we could review the tape. At the mm -hmm. same point in time, if um, the transfer station employee comes in on Saturday and there's an issue there, then they could contact us and contact me and say, "Hey, we we had an issue on," and we can then go and look at it. So, uh, okay. I just think that the monitoring, I, you know, I don't know, you talked about gym monitoring. I don't know how much is involved to have all that information wired over to the police station. It's probably going to be more expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there are, there are options as well, like for our camera system, which is a similar, similar system, but there's options for remotely monitoring as well. Like mm -hmm. I can remotely monitor on my cell phone if I wanted to. Um, you can, you know, sit at home and if somebody calls and says, hey, I just saw a car go behind the transfer station, you can mm -hmm. bring it up on mm -hmm. a computer monitor. And as mm -hmm. long as you're, as long as it's connected that way, you know, these standalone systems that aren't connected, you know, with mm -hmm. an internet connection, you're not going to have that access. But if you do have mm -hmm. an internet connection, you can mm -hmm. essentially monitor it from anywhere. <clears throat> well, I think we should have that. Okay. And Joyce, when's the next issue of the scoop coming out? Uh, the deadline is um, like the last Wednesday in February, and it's coming out the first week of March. March. Okay. So, there's, um, so there's a little bit of time. Well, why don't I work with Fran and Brian and even, you know, Jim between the four, you know, we can come up with it by your, maybe your next meeting, something a little bit more um detailed in regards to what we might really need to start off with to get the camera system in place and go from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Sounds good. What was your, what was the total estimate? That I don't have listening? it in front of me. Um, do you remember Jim, when I forwarded it off to you? Yeah, it was just, it was just over $9,000. That's what I thought. Yeah. 
But that was for now. That was um, eight or nine cameras, which was like you know starting with the with the Cadillac, so to speak. That was um, three cameras in the highway department, and um, the rest of them all around the exterior. So I would encourage you guys to pare that down a little bit. That that yeah. seems a bit excessive. It, yeah. it's <laughs> it can be. It's but it was that was a starting point just to see where. And again, you know, I, uh, I was also looking at it if the mass D, if this grant had didn't really have a limitation and would pay for the whole thing, then that's so be it. But sure. that's why I'm saying I suggest let me I'll work with Brian and may, by the next meeting, we can have something a lot more pared down and more realistic. Okay, okay. sounds good. Okay, move on the agenda. Okay, next item is uh, COVID-19 state of emergency. Brian, do you, anything there in particular you wanna discuss? Um, <clears throat> a couple of new items related to this. Um, I think I had shared this with the board that uh, in the most recent federal stimulus bill, they extended uh, mm -hmm. um, the deadline for communities to expend their CARES Act funds. So they extended it 12 months. So instead of I expiring, well, today, um, it'll be another 12 months to use those, um, in terms of, um, COVID vaccinations, um, it's looking like, um, in terms of first responders, I think they're, they're priority one C, um, it will, it's looking like there's going to be a regional, uh, vaccination clinic for first responders, um, Fran community health center of Franklin County. Yeah. Did I get the name right? Um, yeah. It's looking like that's probably where that's going to happen for Franklin County, or it's going to be an option for Franklin County first responders. Um, in terms of COVID-19 and sort of globally speaking, it, it's still not going well. No. Um, <laughs> Fran and Becky, are the, we got the two local experts here if they want to add anything, but um, it's still uh, not great. Is, is there CARES Act money st still available to use? Yeah, if we, um, if we, if I, if I include what we've given to this, what we've committed to the schools, they haven't, they haven't spent it all. Um, I think there's around probably over 20,000 left, just over 20,000 left, depending on how MEMA reimbursement come back, maybe between 20 and 30,000. Okay. Can I make a suggestion to, I guess, Fran, not only the Board of Health, but also from your, your, your in that other group of senior citizens, age, aging in place, whatever you want to call it, yeah. uh, is, is there maybe some uh, help that seniors in, in town could, could use to uh, go to these locations to get the vaccine when that comes available? I mean, either either uh, transportation to it by some individual or contracting with, with some some company to, to do that, or mm. hiring a nurse or somebody to come to say the town hall for seniors in town that that can't necessarily go to these locations to get vaccinated. Is that something mm. that, that would help the, our, our seniors that are that are immobile and and or and can't go to these locations? Yeah, uh, we haven't discussed that. I mean, we, uh, that folks who are down the list are not likely to be getting any COVID shots until way April maybe. But at that point, <laughs> I assume the state is um, giving, giving us a little bit more funding. Right now there's no funding to set up these clinics. So, um, you know, for the first responders, that's happening, but it's uh, in places that already have uh, uh, administrative things in place, like the registrations and the the, um, the the systems to monitor who got it when and uh, all that other stuff. Um, but at some point, when it gets down to the general population, which is who I, unless you're talking about those seniors with morbidities. There is a second phase with some comorbidity um, folks in it. And I don't know how we're going to determine that. That may be going through 
their uh, doctor's offices, actually, because it, it, it's also something that the the, um, the outreach coordinator from the senior center can work will be probably working on. Um, yes, yeah. find out who um, who needs that assistance. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a, a a working relationship with the Deerfield Town Nurse already um, in relation to some senior, senior center activities and anyone who wants to interact mm -hmm. there. So. I, I think we're a, a little bit running blind right now because we don't know what the distribution plan is from the federal government or, or the state for yeah. different different levels of seniors. But, you know, I, I think it's a great question, Fred. I just think that we're, we're talking about a huge unknown at this point. Unfortunately. Right. right but, it, but if we have opportunity mm -hmm. to, to do something, mm -hmm. it's funny. Sure, you're right. But we're just, it's just premature. That's all. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, the other thing comes to mind, I think the senior center has, has a van or they recently got a van and maybe that's something that mm -hmm. we can arrange for Waitley seniors to use that van to, to, to go get vaccinated or yeah. whatever uh, mm -hmm. and, and do that on a certain days for Waitley seniors, say. And yeah, the it, vaccine doesn't exist yet for them, Fred. Fred. Pardon? The, the vaccine doesn't, doesn't. I know, I know, but I'm looking at looking ahead that once it comes yeah. comes a, a, available, uh, mm -hmm. it, we we don't know. It could be within what we hear the first hundred days of, of the new administration, even so. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> there, there is a chance that it could accelerate very quickly because uh, I was just reading about how the um, the new. Um, you know, the new mutant of the virus is concerning a lot of people and the way to combat this evolution of the virus is to, is to increase um, herd immunity more quickly. And so that means rolling out the vaccine more quickly than we're doing right now. So there is a chance that we are going to suddenly be faced with this is happening faster than we think. So it's good. It is, Fred, it's really good to be thinking about mm -hmm. how we're all going to be working mm -hmm. on this. So, because for instance, you mm -hmm. know, the dilemma with moving around seniors is um, social distancing. You know, you don't want to put them all on a van together because you might end up with a with an outbreak. So mm -hmm. do you have the healthcare worker go to the person's house in a small town like Waitley that might make more sense. So it is, it is good to be thinking about this ahead of time. Well, yeah, it, it is good. And, and I just heard today for, for my, my age group that I should be looking at February sometime. I've been told. So that's exciting. That, yeah. would, that would be the the what, <laughs> what I'm hearing is that there's going to be hopefully more money, more distribution money flowing on behalf of states from the federal government. That that money yeah. is lacking right now. Um, okay. That may be a wish. <laughs> no, yeah. there's COVID. There's COVID nineteen money in the, what was recently well. If it gets finally passed, who knows? But um, the state hasn't figured out how it's going to distribute that yet. So we'll, you know, <laughs> but we'll do something. We'll, I'm sure, between the senior center and uh, uh, Valley Neighbors and other groups who are life path that, um, you know, people that are homebound, I don't know how many that'll be, but if that is the case, there'll, there'll be some way to get vaccine to them. Uh, it's, it is a pretty cumbersome thing, at least with the two shot vaccines, because you have to have all kinds of records set up and registration set up. You have to make sure people are going to come back when, you know, it's, it's not as easy as, uh, you know, getting a shot in the arm, just going down the street or something like that, or going to somebody's house. It's um, everybody who gets a shot has to go in a big database yeah. and it states, um, uh, I forget what it's called, it's a uh, database, but um, it will, it's uh, it's a bit cumbersome. Even Bay State Medical has, has had problems with it. So, you know, it's coming and it may come faster, but it's 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 gonna come with a lot of um, complications, at least on the provider side. And then we can send them all to Becky's office. Okay. But, uh, yeah, she wants to do it. Sure. <laughs> I guess if there's if there's a need to use to, for funds to to facilitate this coordination and, and whatever, I, I guess I would like to see using the, the care funds the town has if it's necessary and if that will help. 
I, mm -hmm. I guess, and, and just to, to consider that, don't don't eliminate it because there's there's no money to provide transportation or nursing or whatever. I, I think uh, we need to look at a positive way of trying to do mm -hmm. that if it's needed, mm -hmm. if and when it's needed, so. Mm. Maybe we even collect volunteers that are willing to do the driving, you know, things like that. Now it would be the time to start collecting mm. names of people and, right. and training and things like that. Right. Yeah. Actually, our other member who's not here tonight, Mike Archibald, is seriously thinking of becoming a kind of a site COVID site coordinator, <laughs> and um, he will be leaving his position, uh, his current position, shortly, and be available to do some planning with us on this. So, and he we're, has we're the, he has the experience of the flu clinic, so which would be yep. really fantastic. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it is. It's good to be thinking about this now. For sure. I'll say whatever resources you need, please coordinate with Brian and we'll see mm -hmm. what we can do to, to help you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Fred. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian, do you have anything else on the COVID? I don't know. Stuff? No. And I see we do have, well, what are we up to eight or nine active cases right now? 10, I believe. All right. <laughs> Nine at the moment. Nine. Two, two just recent ones today. <laughs> two more today, I should say. So it's a mini spike at the moment. It's not as bad as it was, but um, we, as you probably heard, we uh, voted to uh, have the schools stay remote through the uh, through January eighth, so they wouldn't be back in person till the eleventh which kind of lines up with the governor's um, rollback orders. So that's good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. Okay, anything else on uh, COVID? We need to, anybody want to talk about? We're masked. We're masked. Right. Social distance yeah. offices are still closed. And don't go visit your friends. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. All right, you okay. need us for anything else? We're going. No, you're welcome to stay if you want. <laughs> we got an exciting discussion about uh, Hayden Mill Road coming up. Yeah. <laughs> management grants and- Okay. You know, go, you can go, home and, newspaper. <laughs> go and watch UMass basketball. They're playing tonight. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. I'm, nice I'm gonna buzz study. out. Thanks. Mm -hmm. here and thanks for- Thanks for representing. Thank okay, thanks, guys. Rebecca and Fran. Bye. Okay. Hi. Uh, old business, uh, discuss a proposed cost sharing between the Mass uh, DOT and the town for the continued design uh, of Haydenville Road project. Uh, the last Keith. Brian, you want to talk about that? Yep. Um, as we all know, this has been a long process. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick summary. 2014 transportation bond bill, $5.6 million. For this project in both um, Haydenville Road and Mountain Street in Williamsburg and Waitley, well, Waitley, Haydenville Road and Mountain Street in Williamsburg. Um, and it's been like pulling teeth to get a penny out of Mass DOT um, towards this project. Um, I didn't know this, but I found out very quickly that earmarks and transportation bond bills are not binding on mass DOT and they can spend the money in a transportation bond bill as they choose in accordance with their capital improvement plans and priorities. So um, it's been a struggle um, up until, uh, well, we're really right now where we are is and to their credit, Mass DOT has agreed to fund the project through 25% design in both Waitley and Williamsburg. Um, projects need to be obviously brought to brought to full design um, before they can be constructed, and they're at 25% design right now. So uh, there's 75% left to go, and then there's also the issue of how do we pay for construction. Uh, Certain roads are, are considered federal aid eligible. Haydenville Road is one of them, Mountain Street is one of them, which means that 
Um, there's a pot of money for Franklin County that we can access to have the road to pay for the road reconstruction. Um, so currently we have the Haydenville Road reconstruction listed on 20, the, the, the uh, construction year 2025 on the Franklin County tip. Um, it got bumped off. It was on two years ago, it got bumped off last year and now it's back on for 2025. Um, so the question as to who would pay for the remaining 75% of the design was an open question. Um, so, and we, I think we owe big thanks to, to Natalie Blay and Joe Comerford and, and Adam Hines, who have kind of taken up the cause um, with Mass DOT. And, oh, Keith's coming back. Um, so what what they've been able to 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 uh, negotiate on our behalf is that at the end of the day, Mass DOT is willing to pay for 83% of the total design um, for Haydenville Road. And the town would have to pay 17% uh, um, of the total cost, which amounts to um, just over $156,000. So, mm. and, and in addition to that, we would agree. It's 70, it's a uh, 17% of the remaining 75% of the total. I'm sorry, of the total, 17% of the total design of costs. So they've already covered 25% of it. They'll cover an additional, uh, whatever number adds up to 83 and they want between Williamsburg and Waitley to pay the other 17%. Of the total, yeah, the total. Of the to of the okay, good. All right, yeah. I just want to be clear Maybe about it. Is there still a chance that Northampton would, would be willing to kick in some, some money because of their um, aquifer? We're still trying to work with, with them, and, and I, I think our representatives are trying to coordinate with them. I keep bringing that up that they need to come to the table at least to hear what's going on and and mm -hmm. support the project, at, especially in Williamsburg, to get it on their program. Uh, and and maybe they will contribute some dollars for either design or some construction. Uh, we're still working on that. And I, and I think our representatives are, are, are helping us coordinate that. The, yeah, the way it was left was Joe Comerford was going to speak with the mayor of Northampton yeah. um, about that. Um, part of part of the the Mass DOT proposal is also that the towns would pursue construction through through the through the tip process. Um, so, like I said, for wait, we we have it listed in twenty twenty five. Um, for Williamsburg, it's a little bit more of a challenge because they're part of the. Um, mm -hmm. The Pioneer Valley MPO, Metropolitan, the, the Transportation Planning Organization. Um, so while they get more transportation dollars as a whole, they also have more needs. I mean, they're mm -hmm. going up against much larger towns and cities that are also uh, looking for transportation funding. So that's not, um, it's not listed in their, in their TIP yet. TIP stands for Transportation Improvement Plan. Um, so um, at the end of the day, I, I think Fred, um, Fred, Keith and I have been, and along with Natalie and Joe and Joe Comerford and Adam Hines and, and um, our counterparts in Williamsburg, we've been really pushing on this. And um, at this point, we need to sort of consider whether we can fund the remaining 156,000 um, mm -hmm. in design costs. One of the one open question that I posed to Natalie and she was going to pass it along was whether we can spread out these costs over a number of years. Um, it is chapter 90 eligible. So because it's, it's, it has to do with our uh, road design. Um, and if we could spread it out over a number of years, uh, if it's three years, five years, um, mm -hmm. that would also be helpful. Uh, we're yeah. waiting on the answer for that, but I, I would imagine that it, that that is possible because it's just mass DOT fronting the money that they likely have mm. in, in us paying it back when we get our chapter 90 monies dispersed. Um, so I guess the ask tonight is whether this is something that we want to 
um, continue pursuing. Mm. What, what do we get each year for Chapter 95? That would be my question, yeah. About 140. It, it moves around every year, but around 140, 142. Okay. So we could um, you know, I, you know, I sent an email off to Brian. You know, my my suggestion is, if if we were to say, you know what, thanks but no thanks, and, and walk away from it, we would be, at some point in time, re responsible to use our chapter ninety, within an within a short within certainly within ten years, we would be spending more money to pave it just by doing an inch and a half overlay, basically, we would spend more money ourselves than we will spend now to get a much better job. For us just to spend the mon our own money and put an overlay of pavement on it, that's not gonna address any of the other issues. It's not going to um, widen the road where it's very narrow out near the reservoir. It's not going to improve any, of the, it wouldn't improve any of the drainage and it wouldn't touch a single piece of the guardrail. Um, guardrail in itself is very, very expensive. And this project would replace all of the guardrail all the way, you know, it's almost two miles from, they're just a hair over two miles. So there's a lot of money that would get spent on guardrail. So it, it is certainly, um, mm -hmm in my mind, well worth it. And, you know, we're already, we're already running with a balance in chapter 90. I'm not, I haven't ever been to the point where I'm out of money. It gets tight sometimes waiting before we can um, get next year's allotment. Sometimes mass DOT is late in allocating it and, and freeing it up for us, but um, we are not as bad as some communities that, that, literally have to wait for it we're we're always operating about a year year um i guess i'd say a year behind in, in the spending i i would be shocked if anyone thought that we should not go forward with this personally i i well, it's I, something that we've been talking about for literally a decade a decade or more yeah but then I think the move that we move forward with this, I don't know if we have to sign something or just a, an affirmative vote so that Keith and uh, Brian can move forward. But I would move that we move forward on this. Yeah, that that would be my recommendation as well because uh, I think this this has come to the to the forefront for for FERCOG and 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 uh, Mass uh, DOT because. Because we're involved, we're going to meetings. We're showing them that we're serious about the project, that we want to finish the design. We are working with with the the engineer on, on the design. We've had one or two meetings with him, Keith, uh, myself, and I think Brian. We, so we did go over some of that. We are coordinating with with Williamsburg. Uh, so it, you know the the momentum is, is there. Uh, people are aware of it, especially at FERCOG. Uh, not only on a tip, but all their committees uh, that they, they look at the tip every year and approve projects. They see us on there. They see the town there promoting the project and being serious about it. Uh, I, I think it's very important to continue showing our effort, our emphasis, our need for this project. Uh, and as as Keith is saying, the 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 dollars uh, for design would be well well spent. Uh, when compared to what our, our routine maintenance costs would be for that section of road. So, uh, and, and one I thing that just remember is that this will not cover any easements that we need to take. And they've already pointed out that there will be some necessary. I don't know where yet. I'm making the assumption that the majority of them are along the area that the city of Northampton owns. Um, it would be my hope that they that we would just get a donation from them and that the town wouldn't have to pay for that. But um, when we did Masterson Road quite a few years ago, we had the same scenario where some of the easements needed to be taken and we in the town had to come up with a couple thousand dollars, if I remember right, during that time frame. So 
there may need to be an article on town meeting floor at some point in time to to fund a few easements that might need to be taken but hopefully we can negotiate a donation from any any of the land owners and i think the the schedule here what i remember brian and keith is for the finishing the design sometime this calendar year and doing a public no, the 25%, 25%. design will be done this calendar year sometime in holding a public meeting to get comments and input on it. That would be in 21. 21, right. This coming yeah, not, okay. calendar year, right. Next calendar year, right. Okay, so so it is it is coming up and there, there is going to be public comment, opportunity for comment and input uh, in 2021, so. Okay, so I hear Joyce uh, supporting it. I supported Jonathan. You support continuing? I said I did, yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't think it's a motion. I think mean, it's just a, an, an attaboy, pat on the back, go get him. Right. Okay. Yeah, at some point, at some point, I think there'll be some type of written agreement to sign, but right. yep, perfect. Right now. Okay. Good. Okay, thanks. Uh, New business, uh, approve the emergency management performance grant to help offset the cost of new public safety radios, 2,700, repurposed for, for the same use. Is this from the, uh, this from the uh, police? No, this is a, this is an annual grant that, okay. um, that one applies for. Um, that she can apply for as emergency management director. Um, so 2020, um, one of the eligible expenses is to, is we could put the, the, the funds towards the replacement costs for the new radios that we need to purchase. Um, and Lynn was also able to repurpose the 2019 grant, which was originally for electronic message boards, but we were able to get those fully paid for with the, um, some of the uh, supplemental funding that we got for the, um, uh, DOJ. I don't remember who did the CESFP grant, but um, those were fully paid for through a grant, um, so that so those funds weren't needed for that. So, um, be around fifty four hundred dollars that could offset the cost that we need to to uh, pay for for the radios. Well, I move we sign this uh, grant this uh, grant application as soon as we possibly can. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay, next item a new business is consider a lease purchase of a Bandit 15 XP wood chipper for the highway department. So at the last annual town meeting, the, the voters approved uh, the lease purchase of a wood chipper for the highway department. Um, and I think due to a lot of reasons, due to manufacturing delays and everything else that COVID delayed, um, there was a, it was difficult to get these. Uh, so now it's going to be available soon, I think, right, Keith? Um, yeah, my, you know, a few weeks ago, he thought it would be here before the end of the year. Well, unless it comes up with it tomorrow, I don't expect it, but it's, it should be pretty soon. Okay. If you looked at, I, I saw the estimate you got from the company selling it. If you looked at other other vendors to the, uh, sell this product. Yeah, back you know this this was a, a bid through um, Sourcewell, is which is a federal bid, um, and so we had you know looked into the machines back in February going on a year ago after the current chipper that we previously owned um, when when we had the failure with that machine we started to look into seeing how what would be best for our for our needs okay. there's, there's no action for us to take right now Keith. you're just giving us an update right yeah I, I don't know if you know if to you know the town meeting approved to do the lease this is just the formality Lynn is done the paperwork i don't know if the board needs brian that's what brian's probably going to tell you i don't know 
Yeah, yeah, the, the board would need to approve um, essentially entering into the lease purchase agreement with uh, Kaya State Bank. I, I would make a motion to enter into that. I second that. Okay, the, the, uh, the purchase or lease is over, is over a five-year period with the bank? Yep. And can we uh, repay that early without penalty? Um, I'd have to look. Yeah, I have to remember the interest rate was you. like the interest rate was like two percent. Right. Yeah, interest right. rate's two point eight. So, so there's no, I don't, I don't see a reason why we would do that personally, Fred. But well, other than maybe the interest rate isn't that critical, but can we prepay? And I can. You you've also got on lease uh, excavator or something, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Is that a non-starter, Fred? If it, if we can't prepay, you're going to be against it, or you just like us to look into whether we can prepay it and have that option available if funds are available. Yeah, I'd like to have that as an option. If, like you say, if funds are available, if we can prepay. Yeah, I'll ch I'll check with Lynn. Otherwise, no, I, I have no problem with, with continuing with it. No, but. Okay. Do you need a roll call vote? Yes, please. Okay, roll call. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yes. Yeah. Fred? Yes. Okay. Okay, we're down to uh, town administrator updates. All right? We are. And we I'm taking it off tonight, all. Good night, Jim. Good night, Jim. Good night, Jim. Um, Keith, um, well, my first one on your Williamsburg Road update. Did the guardrails get installed or not yet? Yes, they got installed today. Okay. Um, so at this point in time, I need to, um, still working on getting the signs made for the posting, which, yep. you know, I couldn't do quite some time ago because I hadn't heard from Mass DOT, but now I'm just going to get the signs installed. And as soon as I get that done, the road will be open to traffic. So the posting is for weight limits? Correct. For what, the one bridge that wasn't repaired? There's the one more bridge. The next bridge up is, in my mind, is in pretty good shape. However, Mass DOT needs to rate it, and they, they wouldn't rate it because the road was closed and they didn't consider it a high priority. And now they put it on their list again and it's, I don't know when they're gonna get it done. So in the meantime, to be very conservative, um, Mass DOT has told me to post it for three ton, which I'm not, I'm not worried that it won't hold three ton. I, I know it'll do better than that, but at the same point in time, they don't want like logging trucks going over it until it can get rated. So the bridges that were put in can carry any legal load. It's just that other bridge that's still unrated. Okay. And, and is that unrated bridge to the west of the access road that goes up the mountain for property owners? So people it's, don't need to, property owners don't need to go over that third bridge? It's in between Dry Hill and Grass Hill, that one. So it's right there at the intersection of the other two roads. Um, but it, it will certainly take care of the everyday traffic. So like our resident that lives on Dry Hill can come to the transfer station without having to drive all the way around. Okay. Um, so just a reminder, uh, January 4th is the first MVP workshop. Um, that'll be virtual. Um, if anybody hasn't um, received an invitation and they would like to attend, um, they can go to the, the Whaley website and look under the news section and they can find uh, the registration uh, material there and respond the, and get the Zoom link. Uh, and then there's, a, there's a, a second workshop the following week, the following Monday on January 11th. Um, Hey, Brian, also, yep. Can we possibly, you, 
send out an email to all department heads and committee chairs encouraging their membership to attend these hearings. Uh, it's, it's kind of important that we get some element of a critical mass. Yeah. So I, I just think that if we, if we send it to, to, to committee chairs, commission chairs, and ask them to encourage their membership to attend, um, I think it can't hurt. I, I think, you know, if we, I don't know what goal we have, but I'm, I know that um, people are a little nervous that we don't have a lot of people attending yet. Yeah, I sent out, I did send out a, uh, a targeted email. Um, we had sent it out to department heads and chairs, and I sent it out to um, the individual emails that I had for board and committee members. I sent it out yesterday when I heard about how many signups we had. Um, but we can also send another one out to, for how asking committee chairs have? to encourage. Um, we have at least two. Yeah, yeah, me, you, and well, three, me, you, and Amy. But you, um, you have to sign I'm, up ahead of time to be allowed access to the meeting? Yes. To get the Zoom link, yes. Okay. Yep. So yeah, Jonathan, we can send out another email asking department heads and committee chairs to encourage attendance. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, also, uh, that uh, the fourth, um, the marijuana stab the cultivation establishment at River Road is holding a second community outreach meeting. Um, I let them know it conflicted with the with, with our workshop, but um, it is their second one. There's nothing new. They're they're just required by CCC regulations to hold a community outreach meeting every six months until they apply. So this is a requirement that that they have to meet. Um, Green communities grants are going to be uh, we'll be able to apply for one this year. Um, it's, they change the program a little bit. They're having uh, application rounds in the spring and the fall. That was one of the big complaints about the program was that it didn't match up with other uh, state opportunities for funding. Um, so um, if anybody has any ideas as to what we can do for that, uh, please send me an email. Um, so about a year ago, um, FERCOG had we applied for the, the DLTA funding assistance um, and they had awarded us, well, it's really st uh, staffing uh, to do some work on a housing study was one of our requests. And I finally got word, I, I think Fred, you may have been on the email um, that was sent to, to Catherine, um, but they're gonna start doing some of that that um, preliminary work for, for an updated housing um, housing needs assessment. Um, a couple, th and one other thing, the the town applied for the regional micro enterprise assistance program a while back. Um, that was for, with the city of Greenfield. Um, and I followed up the other day to see if anybody from Waitley had, had taken advantage of that. And there was one um, Waitley business. It, it's, the process is confidential. So they couldn't tell me who it was, but they said it was one Waitley business and well, one Waitley farm um, who was trying to take advantage of that the $10,000 um, assistance program. So hopefully it will, our work will have paid off. Um, one other thing that news that we got today, uh, Mass DEP has approved the, uh, approved the connection of the, Waitley Water District with the Waitley Water Department. They've approved the, the pumping station. Um, I think it was sooner than we expected they would get through it. Um, yeah. So I'll be I'll pull a meeting together with with myself, Keith, uh, Wayne, and Nicholas, and, and figure out uh, how to <laughs> how to make it happen uh, with all the different moving pieces that are going to be going to be involved. But. about it for me. Ryan, have you come up with a schedule for budget time? Um not yet, no. Oh, okay. No, I haven't I haven't I haven't gotten in touch with Paul yet. Okay. okay. But 
Oh, I'm sorry, Fred, one more thing. Uh, uh, capital improvement projects, um, we hope to receive those by uh, Monday, January 4th. Fred, and then we'll we'll convene a meeting of the of the virtual CIPC um, and start having those conversations. Okay. Anybody, anybody have anything else they want to bring up? No, we're done. To adjourn. Within two hours, hour and a half. Oh, our shortest meeting of a while. Fred, you're just that whip as we go along here. I'm still moved to adjourn. Second. Okay. We'll call vote. Joyce? Yes. Uh, Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, everybody have a happy and safe uh, New Year's. Mm, you too, Fred. Take care. Good night. Happy New Year. Bye. 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 Bye, Amy. Bye. Bye.